Casey Gray here from The Conscious Builder, and today I'm answering the question of how much does it cost to build a custom home? Another way this question is asked to me all the time is how much per square foot does it cost to build a custom home? So keep in mind, I'm gonna be speaking from my experience here in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. So you'll definitely have to do some research on what's required within your area, but I will at least give you a good sense of all of the things that are required in order to get that cost that you're looking for for your custom home. I will tell you right off the bat that there is not just one answer. It doesn't cost you $400, $500 square foot, whatever it may be. The, the, the answer is actually, it varies, but what I'm going to do is explain to you all of those things that are going to affect the price so that you can be more educated and you understand what to look for and you understand what's going to affect the price, whether that's up or down, for when you're planning for your custom home. All right, I'm gonna talk about construction first and then we'll get into the pre-construction costs after. First thing to consider on construction is the site work and the well and the septic, if you have that. Depends on where you're building, you might not have well or septic, but I'm gonna talk about all those things here. So on the site work, there could be a wide range of prices. So for example, a bigger lot does not mean more cost for site work. It can, it often does if there's a big long driveway. However, digging a big hole in a wide open space can also be more cost effective than digging a smaller hole in a very tight space for an infill, for example. If you get into shoring, that can be quite costly when you're doing your custom home. So things to consider when you're looking at your lots. The other thing is the soil conditions. What are you gonna get into? Are you gonna run into peat moss like what we did when we built our house years ago? Uh, are you gonna hit bedrock? If you do hit bedrock, how deep is it? And if you do hit it, what are you gonna do in that case? Do you wanna dig into it? Do you still want the basement? Do you just eliminate the basement, add on to other parts of your home if you're expecting to use that space as, as livable space? Or is it perfectly great? Are you gonna dig a simple hole and everything's gonna be perfect? Which does happen as well. But these are all things that you need to plan for. And then the other thing you need to consider when digging these holes is that I'll compare this to a larger lot. So if you're on a big lot where you have to have a decent sized driveway, so if you're, you're building out say on a two acre lot somewhere, you're gonna have a cost associated with just making a driveway to get to that home. That's all part of the site work. It doesn't matter if that home is 2,000 square feet or 10,000 square feet, that driveway cost is going to be the same, assuming you have the same design of driveway and then you're gonna to have to dig the hole. So is the house that is five times the size, if you're going from 2,000, 10,000 for example, is that house that's five times the size gonna have five times the amount of site work? The answer is no. So if you're including that in your per square foot price, it's going to throw off your number. So that's gonna give you a higher per square foot price for the smaller home versus the larger home. The other thing that's not going to change based on the size of your home is your well. Sure, the equipment might change, but your well is gonna be whatever the cost of the well is. Your septic may also change if you add more bedrooms and bathrooms for a bigger home. However, it's not gonna change in proportion to the size of your home necessarily. It, once again, a house that is five times the size isn't gonna have a septic that is five times the price. There is a base price typically that you're working with, and then you're gonna be adding on to that. All right, next I want to discuss the foundation. Foundations will vary widely depending on what you need for your home. Do you have a basement or do you not have a basement? If you do have a basement, how deep is your foundation? How big is your foundation? Is it a box or do you have lots of corners and checks? Every time you add a corner to a foundation, it gets more expensive because there is more work involved in building and forming and pouring that concrete. What are the structural requirements? What type of foundation is it, right? Is it your typical poured foundation or are you getting into something like an ICF foundation, which is going to affect other things down the road as well, but these are all things that are going to affect your foundation price. So the rule of thumb though, and this is for all of construction, is the simpler the design, the more cost effective it will be. So if you're gonna build a box, that's gonna be the cheapest thing. If you're going to add on to that box, then it's going to get more and more expensive. Other things to consider are the slab, right? Are you putting a nice, 
polish or smooth finish slab in there in your garage, right? A smooth finish slab is going to be cheaper than a broom finish within the garage. You're not going to do a broom finish in your basement or in, on your main floor if you don't have a basement. Uh, but those are things that will also affect the price if you have to reinforce it. What are the structural details and so forth? So there are a lot of things that affect that foundation price for your custom home. The next thing I want to mention is just the overall design of the home. There's a big difference from one, let's say 2,500 square foot home to the next 2,500 square foot home. You could build a simple home that has, that's a box, that has a gable roof, that has carpet for flooring, uh, that has you know cheap cabinets, that has very, like no bump outs anywhere, just simple box, everything simple to the point roof over your head essentially. That's going to be more cost effective than a 2,500 square foot architectural wet dream, so to speak, with lots of maybe curves and lots of bump outs and lots of details that need to be built. You know, higher ceilings, right? That's not gonna affect your square footage, but that is going to add cost to the build. It's, it's a lot more work to build a 10 foot wall versus an eight foot wall when you get into the requirements for blocking as well as the labor required to build that wall. All of this will factor into that cost per square foot or the overall cost for your home. Now, do keep in mind that economies of scale do come into play. So for example, a bigger home may cost you less per square foot because you have a lot more open space. Smaller homes typically cost you more per square foot because you're still packing in a lot of the same stuff. You still need a kitchen, you still need some bathrooms. So if you're building a bigger home, Say, let's say you build a 2,000 square foot, four bedroom home with a kitchen and, a, and three bathrooms, you could build a 4,000 square foot home with these same finishes. So that just means that you have maybe bigger bedrooms and, and a bigger, bigger kitchen, bigger bathrooms, that sort of thing. But overall, you have more of that cheaper space, which is the overall living space of the bedrooms, the living room, the dining room, things that don't have a lot of finishings in them, like a kitchen or like a bathroom. Now, speaking about bathrooms and kitchens, that is also going to add costs or have a wide range of costs. You can do your kitchen for $50,000 or you can do your kitchen for $250,000. Uh, you can buy a $500 toilet or you can buy a $1,500 toilet. You can put in custom shower glass doors or you can put in a shower curtain. So these are all things that are going to add to the cost of your home, but not add square footage. So once again, it throws off the cost per square foot. What are you expecting for your home? You need to factor that in to your budget. Now let's chat a little bit about exterior finishes. I'm guessing if you're building a custom home, you don't want vinyl siding. If you do, that's fine. That's going to likely be your most cost effective option. But usually people are gonna want a nice wood product or cement board or steel or brick or stone or a combination of these things. And all of those things come at a very different price. So these are all things that you have to factor in to your budget. What are you willing to spend? So I know that there's a wide range in all these things, but all of these things add up. We all want the really nice things. So what I'm doing here is letting you know that these nice things are great. Uh, they just continuously add up. If you want the nicer kitchen, you want the nicer exterior finishes, you want the bump outs, you want the nicer looking design, you want the taller walls so you have higher ceilings. These are all things that are going to increase that cost per square foot. Windows and doors is a huge range of costs, especially for the types of homes that we build. If you wanna build a minimum code home with the essentially the worst house that you're allowed to build by law, right? That's what a minimum code home is. Then uh, chances are we're not building it. Uh, but if you're getting into a nicer product, even if you're building custom home, typically people aren't putting the cheapest windows. If, even if we take performance out of it, if you go from a PVC window to an aluminum cladded wood window, there is going to be a significant price difference, right? It could go from 30,000 to 100,000 for the same size of windows and windows that might not even perform as good depending on how you factor, how they model their windows and how they build their glass and so forth. Um, but if you're getting into a higher performing home like the types of homes that we do, they can become even more expensive than that, once again, depending on the finish, right? 
PVC versus aluminum cladded wood versus uh, fiberglass all have very different price ranges. Tilt and turns versus casements or sliders. These are all things that get factored into that cost. And there is a large ocean, let's say, of manufacturers to choose from when it comes to windows and doors for your home. So you need to understand what you're looking for and what the cost associated with that style of window is going to be. Now interior finishes. This is where I find most homeowners think that they can save a lot. And there's usually not that much to save in interior finishes because we're talking about baseboards and trim, we're talking about floor finishes, we're talking about cabinetry. Yes, you can save quite a bit with your cabinetry, uh, but usually people might be like, well, what if I don't finish my basement? How much do I save then? Well, usually you don't save as much as you're, you're hoping because you still had to build your basement, you still have to put the structure and you still have to insulate it, you still have to air seal it, you still have to put the electrical in. There's a lot of things that you still have to do. So if you're just talking about finishing it, it's not gonna save a whole lot. Uh, usually in my experience is not saving them what they're looking to save on the grand scheme of things. So it does affect the price though. We do need to keep that in mind. So if you're gonna go with carpet and compare that to a polished concrete or compare that to something like a reclaimed solid wood product, there's gonna be a big price difference. So you need to understand what your style is, what you're looking for, and what that cost per square foot is gonna be. Same thing with tile. Tile is expensive to install. Uh, and then tile can be very expensive to purchase depending on what you're looking for. And if you have a lot of tile, well, and you want a fancy pattern, that is also going to add cost. So this comes into play a lot in bathrooms and kitchens. Those finishes are going to add up quickly. Do you, are you okay with a laminate countertop? Do you want granite or do you want quartz? Do you want something completely custom, right? These, there's gonna be, I've seen significant ranges in prices just for different types of stone for kitchen countertops. So once again, these are all things that you need to factor in. And keep in mind that a lot of builders will have allowances. So if you're talking to a builder and they're giving you allowance for something, make sure that it's included or that it's going to be enough for what you're looking for. And if not, just set, to set that expectation because maybe you want something different than what they, if they put an allowance in there for $10,000 for countertops, but you want the $20,000 countertops, well, that should maybe be discussed ahead of time so that you don't get disappointed down the road and realize that there wasn't enough in the budget for what you're looking for. So this is all gonna be very important when you're working through your design is to bring in that contractor to work with you so that they can make sure that you understand what the costs are associated with all the decisions that are being made throughout the design process. Now, I'm not saying and sharing all of this stuff to scare you away from building a custom home. What I'm doing is making sure that you're informed so that you can make better decisions or plan your custom home better. There's going to be a lot of cost with associated with renovating a home as well. And a lot of the things that I'm discussing are also going to affect the price of a renovation. So keep in mind that there can be a wide range of pricing for a 2,500 square foot home that is on a perfect lot that only has a small driveway that doesn't need a septic or well, that's gonna be vinyl siding and shingle roof and PVC windows and cheap cabinetry and so forth versus a 25 square foot home that's on a two acre lot that needs a large driveway, a septic, a well. Uh, they want brick on the exterior. They want a steel roof. Uh, they want solar panels. They, they want aluminum cladded, triple glazed windows. That's same size home, two very different products, but at the same time, it also doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be a cost difference for performance either. A high performing home doesn't necessarily have to be more expensive. There's a lot of other things that come into that. A high performing home really is only the envelope, the windows and doors, and maybe your HVAC system that are going to affect your pricing. But everything else is the same. Everything else is essentially just makeup on the home and you get to decide what you wanna do it. We're a big advocate for making sure that you spend money on your envelope so that you don't have to worry about for years to come, for generations to come, depending on if, how long you plan on keeping the home or if it stays in your family and so forth. And then everything else can be changed or replaced down the road if it needs to be. We're an advocate for putting something in that you don't have to change in the long run or down the road. Uh, but if that's a must for whatever reason, be, for budgetary purposes, then that is a must for you in order, to, in order to get your dream home. So keep all of this in mind as you start to plan your custom home project. All right, so now that we've gone through the construction costs, 
there's pre-construction costs as well. And that is super important because we need to make sure that we plan and design our homes properly so that we can be as efficient as possible on the construction side. So I'll share some costs that are here in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. They may vary depending on where you live, but it gives you an idea of everything that's required to build or can be required, I should say, to build a custom home. So planning and architectural design will be somewhere usually between $16 and $25 per square foot, but a lot of them will also charge by the hour. So you just need to make sure that there's enough factored in there for the hours that you're going to need on your project. Now other fees that get factored in or that need to be factored in where we are are things like the development approvals. You know, that could be three to seven grand. Uh, shoring, I had mentioned that before. Shoring is something that's actually required on our infill projects here in Ottawa now, so we're not sure where those costs are gonna come in at, but that's gonna vary from project to project depending on how much shoring is required. Survey, and that could be anywhere from six to 10 grand for to survey your lot and to get everything ready so that you understand what you're building on. Structural engineering for your project could be anywhere from three to seven grand. Geotechnical engineering could be anywhere from 2,500 to $4,000. Septic system engineering could be another 2,500 to $4,000. And mechanical engineering could be another couple thousand dollars. We're also gonna need heat loss calculation where we are typically around $850. And then there's gonna be a mechanical ventilation design summary in order to get permits here in Ottawa. And that'll run maybe around another $450. The other thing I need to point out is that all of these costs I've been sharing to date are all pre-HST. We have 13% tax that gets put on, not all of these, like anything associated with the city won't, won't have the tax, but most of these costs are gonna have tax associated with them. And yes, you can get some of that money back through the new home tax rebate, but if you're building a custom home, you're not gonna get all of it back. Now then you're also gonna get into your construction permit cost, which is gonna depend on a cost per square foot or where you're building, so it depends on what type of project you're doing. Uh, the city development charges is a big one where we are. That can be, right now, I believe anywhere from 27,000 to $41,000 if there has never been a home on the lot. So if you buy a empty lot, you have to pay that amount to the city just to be able to build on your lot. So once again, this might be different where you are, but that's what has to happen here in Ottawa. And then if you wanna get into any sort of certification, then there's going to be a cost associated with this. I always recommend bringing on an energy advisor that whether you get certification or not, they bring a ton of valuable information and they need to be working through that integrated design process with the builder and with the designer. So some certifications will be like Passive House, that could be anywhere from another nine to 12 grand to work through all the certification requirements. Net Zero Energy will be around 1600 to two grand. That is a place where we like to start uh, if we can't go beyond that or if the budget's not there for people to go beyond that, that's still a very well-built home. Lead for Homes, we don't really see any of that in the residential world. We haven't seen any in, in all the projects that we've done, but that could be around three grand. R2000 is another certification here, uh, not something we've been doing since Net Zero has come into play, but that used, used to be around $1,500. Uh, and then you can get into Energy Star as well, which is $1,200, about $1,200. And then there's just an Energide rating where we are here for maybe another $950. All right, now you're, you're like, all right, Casey, screw it. I'm not gonna build a custom home anymore. Uh, that's crazy. I'm not gonna go through the process. Uh, I didn't do this to scare you. I did this to, to help educate you just so that you understand what you're getting into. And it's very possible a lot of people do this. A lot of people build custom homes. And so the question is then, how much should I budget at least to start the design of my custom home? You know, what, what should I, how do I know, even know what I'm gonna be able to build? What I tell people, at least based on today and based on where we're building, is I tell people to, to budget at least $400 per square foot for the building itself. So that's not the site work, that's not the well, well the septic, or any of the pre-construction costs, that's just the building foundation onwards. That usually gives us a good starting point. If they want something more extrav extravagant, and I know that, then I'll give them a higher number. But if we're sticking with a, a simple design with nice finishes and performs very well, that is what I'm comfortable telling people as of today. 
Now, if you want to actually read about what I talked about today, if you want to reference something, we do have a blog post. You can find that on our website as well at theconsciousbuilder.com in the blog section. You can find everything I've talked about today written out so that you can actually reference that if that's going to be helpful. Uh, however, if you're not in our area and you need to verify some of the costs, then I would recommend that you take some of these notes and then you just talk to your local contractors. Talk to people and get a better understanding of what they're looking for. We also have an estimating spreadsheet that you can that you can download to make sure that you get everything included because there's a lot of things that I haven't included in this that are required for projects but I don't think were would matter in terms of talking about in the cost of building because you're gonna need them no matter what for example cleaning the site up and getting rid of garbage and project management and site supervision those are all things that are going to get factored in right the bigger the project the longer it takes the more project management you're going to have the more site supervision you're going to have maybe the more garbage you're going to have and so forth so those are all things that i didn't discuss but as the project evolves those are all things that get factored in so definitely reach out to your local contractor whoever you want to build with and make sure that you understand everything associated with your home so glad you tuned into today's video. If it has been helpful, I would really appreciate a super thanks. It helps us know that we're on the right track and this is information that you're looking for from us. You can also comment in the section down below. We love to see comments. We love to know what people are looking for. We love to get questions because that gives us more ideas for more videos so that we can get more content out there. If you have the question, chances are somebody else has a question, so we wanna know it. And did you know that on average, the utility costs in the US have gone up by 20% over the last 10 years? So if you're in the US and you're looking to reduce your utility costs and save thousands of dollars over the years, I have a great opportunity for you. I've partnered with Apricot Solar and Freedom Forever. And if you're interested in knowing if solar works for your home, you can go to theconsciousbuilder.com slash solar and fill out the form and I will get back to you personally and we'll be able to see if your home qualifies. Once again, that's theconsciousbuilder.com slash solar. Until next time, I'm Casey Gray and remember to live consciously.